Hey folks, for years I used Fantastical 2 and I loved it. It was my calendar app of choice. Then a few months ago, I thought that it was getting a little bit stale and there were some features that were missing and that I found actually in Google Calendar in the web browser. So for a while I used Google Calendar in the web browser. But then just a few weeks ago, I was on vacation and all of a sudden Fantastical 3 dropped. And I was so excited because this new update, this latest version of Fantastical is just so good. And in this video, I want to just share my thoughts with you about what I love about Fantastical 3 and why I switched back to it. It's not going to be a formal review. It's only going to be for Fantastical on the Mac, even though it's fantastic on iPhone and iPadOS as well. And I use it there and it's great. Just some of my thoughts, just want to share with you why I love it, why I'm back with it, and as a bonus, if you stick around to the end, I will also share some of my philosophy about what kind of things I keep track of on my calendar versus what sort of things I think are best kept track of in your task manager. So let's get cracking. Real quick though, my name is Peter. I help people to be more organized and more productive, and I chiefly do that through my two video courses, one on OmniFocus, one on Things 3, and I've got free previews of those video courses. Just go to the video description below the video, click the link, you can get free previews of my courses, and you can also get some free resources for being more productive and more organized with either Things 3 or OmniFocus. So be sure to check those things out. But today we're talking Fantastical, Fantastical 3. What a great piece of software. Now, I don't use all of the features that Fantastical 3 offers. But there are some that I really love. And I just want to start with the one that honestly is the one that immediately got me going again and, and switched back to Fantastical and why I'll happily pay their subscription fee as well. And that is that Fantastical 3 now includes built-in support for interesting calendars. I think this is just amazing. I'm a big fan of Formula One, for example. I love watching Formula One races. I'm also a big fan of the Philadelphia Eagles, and I love watching American football games, particularly the ones that involve the Philadelphia Eagles. So when there's a Formula One race or an Eagles game, I want those things to be on my calendar so that I know that that stuff is coming up. So in the past, I would go scour the internet for websites that produced calendars that involve, um, you know, that show you um, when these events are and that let you put them on your calendar. But I always found that they had time zone issues, so maybe they were off by an hour or two, and you know, I'd be frantically checking in the morning, making sure, oh, is the race at 2 p.m. today or at 3 p.m.? And I just want it to be reliable, what I see on my calendar. Or sometimes the Eagles games actually will get flexed into a different time slot. So the on my calendar it says it'd be at one, but it's actually at four. And so that was frustrating. Now, Fantastical's latest version solves this. If you go to the preferences and under calendars, and then you just click the plus sign, you can actually say add interesting calendars. Now, I've already done that here. So I will just delete these, and let's just go ahead and do this again. Oh, I guess I have to delete them one by one. Unsubscribe, unsubscribe, and unsubscribe. Okay, I'm gonna click over here and go to add interesting calendars. And let's start with Formula One. So if you go to sports over here, you can just click F1 and it's fantastic. I, I can only, I cannot even, or not only say, listen, I want to have all F1 events on my calendar. I can actually say which parts of a racing weekend I want on my calendar. So I definitely want the races on my calendar. So I'll click plus here. I also want the qualifying sessions on my calendar because those are often very exciting. And I love to watch those but I do not want the F1 practices on my calendar. So I'm not gonna click um, the plus button over here. So just having this separated out is fantastic. And I guess this thing, if you look at the bottom right, is powered by some software called Schedules, which I'd never heard of, but it's fantastic that they uh, built this in to Fantastical. Now, I also watch American football, like I said, so you can go over to American football, United States, NFL, and I can just uh, go over to the Eagles and just hit plus. And now all the Eagles games are on my calendar. This is so easy. So let's just get out of this screen. And we'll see my subscriptions again include races, quality, and Eagles. So now if I go to the month view and I go to next month, I'll see that actually there's an F1 qualification for uh, the Australian Grand Prix, which is on my calendar right here. Um, and I guess I'll have to go all the way over to September, see some Eagles games. Um, ba, 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 ba. where are the Eagles games? 
You know what? They're not on here. I suspect that might be because the schedule's not fully set yet. That's probably why. But let's stick with the example of the Formula One races. I guess the the NFL schedule hasn't been released yet, so that'll uh, that'll be pulled in uh, when needed. But here's the F1 races, and just on my calendar, really neat. Another thing I love about the new Fantastic L, by the way, is their excellent support for time zones. So I like to travel, and when you're in a different uh, time zone when you're traveling. It's nice to know what the the time of a particular event will be um, back at home, for example, or in my case, it's also really handy. I can see um, when I double click on this F1 quality event here um, that the, uh, the, the time zone uh, for me, it'll be like seven in the morning, but I could make it say like, what time is it for my friend who is in Kuala Lumpur? If he wants to watch, it'll be 2 p.m. for him. So it'd be handy to know if I'm trying to watch it with someone. Like some, if I'm trying to watch it with someone in on the East Coast of the U.S., it'll be the middle of the night for them. They may not be so, uh, so eager to watch. And I just love how gorgeously this is displayed. And uh, you can actually just, just see that on any event right here. Um, and if I click Day, I can see that here as well. The way you turn that on, by the way, is you just go to Preferences, and I think it's under Advanced, and you can just check that box right here and you can select which time zones you want to see. So time zone support is amazing. I love the interesting calendars, like I said. Um, and the time zone also shows up here. So for example, today is actually uh, the 11th of February. And in the US right now is the New Hampshire primary for the, uh, the Democratic primary for the presidential uh, race. And so results for that start coming out at about 7 p.m. Eastern time. So I'm showing a second time zone on the right here in Fantastic Al and I selected Eastern Time, and uh, I created an event for when the uh, New Hampshire primary results start to come out, which unfortunately is going to be 1 a.m. for me. I probably won't be up for that anymore, but um, it's uh, it's so easy for me. I can just say, oh, it's like 7 p.m. Eastern Time. What time is that for me? 1 in the morning. So excellent uh, time zone support as well. Um, of course, Fantastica looks great, by the way. I mean, this is, I'm looking at the dark mode right now. Um, it's gorgeous. Again, on iPhone and iPad, Fantastica looks gorgeous also. It's also very easy to use. Definitely check that out. Um, but the dark mode here on the Mac is just fantastic. And I'll show you the light mode as well. Also really neat. I'm recording this in the evening, so it's a bit, it's a bit bright for me right now. Um, but yeah, fantastic design. And I love that it, of course, uh, respects the uh, system uh, dark uh, or non-dark mode setting. So aside from the interesting calendars, uh, another thing I love is that Fantastical now supports event templates. So what are event templates for? Some events you have will repeat on a set schedule. For example, I may go lifting on Tuesday and Thursday afternoons, or maybe it'll be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right? So you can create a repeating event and that's that. But sometimes you do things every now and then or even often, but not on a set schedule it's really handy to have a template for that. In the same way that I teach how to use project templates, um, if you're, for those of you who are using uh, either OmniFocus or Things 3, you can also have event templates now in Fantastic L, and I just think this is a great new feature. So how does this work? You can actually um, take an event, for example, this laundry event I got over here, and you can just right click it and go create template. And so to use event templates, all you do is you just click the plus sign over here, and then you click the template that you've just created. So if I click it now, it'll put the event over here, um, call it laundry, and it'll be on the home calendar as it always is. It'll be two hours long as, as the um, sort of template uh, parent was. And um, yeah, it's just super easy. Uh, it saves you a little bit of time again. I'm not actually doing the laundry tomorrow, so I'll, uh, I'll take this off right here. Um, but event templates, especially if you're customizing your events uh, a lot, can uh, save you a little bit of time. Now, there's some other smart features that I really like. Sometimes, for some reason, I find that events show up on more than one of my calendars. Um, for example, sometimes it's like Siri is recognizing that I have a flight, but then Google um, is also recognizing this. Plus, I put in the flight myself on my calendar, and sometimes I just find that the same thing shows up on my calendar several times. But Fantastic Al is really smart and will recognize this for you and will show it as only one event. Let's take this example. Thursday I'm going lifting from 12 to 2 and I've got this on my home calendar. What if I also create an event called lifting, I make it a two hour long event and I'll say it's also from 12 to 2 and I put it on my business calendar. I click add event. 
Oh, I do have to make it an exactly identical event, so I have to also add the gym location. Boom. Now see there's this kind of like dotted line. This is fantastic about recognizing that it's the exact same event. And if I click it, it'll actually say this event is on two calendars. So rather than just showing it twice, Fantastical actually knows that it's the same thing and just shows it to you once, which I love. So I'll just go ahead and delete that again. Are you sure you want to remove it from business? Yeah. So that's really smart. And there's a couple of these really neat, smart things that just make Fantastical so easy to use. And as you can see from my calendar, like I'm not even a heavy calendar user. And my calendar is extra empty now because I just got back from my trip and I, I don't have quite as many things scheduled yet but um, especially if you're using your calendar a lot and you have way more events going on than I do then um, some of these features will just save you a lot of time and a lot of headache. Now one little thing that I love that is new in Fantastic L3 is it now says weather forecasts. Shows right here what the weather is going to be. Unfortunately the weather is not so great in Amsterdam right now it's not even that it's so cold, it's just been very windy and wet. Um, but yeah, these, these forecasts are now showing inside my calendar. On the iPhone, there's a good weather app, but I've never found the, the built-in weather widget on the Mac um, that useful, and I, I don't find myself looking at it very often. And so it's just nice to have a quick glance of what the weather is going to be like, especially if I'm planning when to do something, and be like, hey, Saturday or Friday is not forecasted to rain. <laughs> Maybe let's do it Friday. So really neat that that is uh, built in. Now, another small thing I wanted to show you is just some of the customization features uh, of Fantastical. And th this one existed before. It's not new in Fantastical 3, but uh, I really like it. And so one thing you can do is say how many hours at a time you want to see. So, for example, I can, I can say I want to see eight hours at a time. And then you'll see that you're kind of more zoomed in. But uh, I tend to not have too many calendar events. So I actually like to show um, 16 hours at a time, which gives me like a really high level overview of my week. And so you can use the day view, of course, but um, I don't find myself using the day view too often. Um, I'm almost always looking at the week view and sometimes at the month view uh, just to do some uh, planning. But I'm usually in the week view. And by, by seeing a, a 16 hours at a time for any given day, uh, I can really see most of my week in one glance, and that's um, yeah, it just helps me have a, an overview, a sense of what's what's going on this week. Um, so there's just a couple more things that I wanted to mention that I don't use, but that you might find helpful. As always, Fantastical has the menu bar widget um, where you can uh, start typing and creating new events uh, using natural language, for example. I find myself not using this at all, but you know, maybe you will. Another cool thing is that they've got support for calendar sets now. So if you go to calendar, you can see that you can create calendar sets over here. So for example, you could have your work calendars and your home calendars and have those be separate. You can even set it so that certain sets activate automatically at a location. And so then when you arrive at work, um, people see your work or you will see your work calendar in Fantastical, your work calendar set. Whereas if you uh, come back home, then you will see your home calendar set. So that can be really neat. I don't personally use this myself because um, I don't find uh, that I'm overwhelmed by the amount of um, calendar events anyway and me having my own business uh, work and, and, and non-work is, is a very blurry uh, distinction anyway. Um, but that might be really useful uh, for you. And so the uh, final feature that I want to uh, tell you about that you might find helpful but again it's not something that I really use um, is let's say uh, I have a meeting with Bob Fantastical now actually lets you propose dates. So you can say, for example, well, I uh, I would like to meet with Bob um, say, well, tomorrow uh, at two. But you can, and then you can invite him, of course. Um, but you can also propose times. So this is neat. So for example, maybe well, I could also do ten. Uh, 10 on Thursday or maybe like 11 on Friday. You can actually send this. Um, you can actually invite Bob in and send it and he'll be able to choose one, which is really neat. So uh, well done Flexibits, some really cool features here. Again, um, I don't use all of them, but some of them are just so fantastic um, that uh, I will gladly pay for the uh, premium uh, subscription for Fantastical, which I think is about 44 euros a year. So uh, really totally worth it, in my opinion. It also gives you the apps on iOS and iPadOS too.
Hey, so before we wrap up this video, I just wanted to tell you quickly what my philosophy is on whether to put things on my calendar or put things in your task manager. Because like I said, I do teach how to be more productive and how to be more organized using project-based task managers such as OmniFocus and Things 3. And you can find um, lots of videos on my YouTube channel uh, teaching you how to do that. And you can also go check out the free previews of my full courses where you'll, uh, where you'll learn the entire workflow, the entire system of how to use um, those apps to be more productive and to be more organized. And so when you're working with both a calendar app and a task manager, there may be things sometimes where you're like, hey, what should go where? So for example, you may have a task called do the laundry. But as you'll see, I actually have a, an event on my calendar for doing the laundry. And so here's my philosophy on this. Anything where you know when you're going to do it, right? don't bother putting it in your task manager. So I know I'm going to do the laundry at a certain time because I live in an apartment building and I have to, I have to like book some of the laundry machines upstairs. Um, and so I booked them for a certain time. And so I just put that in my calendar. I, I don't then also um, create uh, a task in my task manager, do the laundry, because it's just superfluous. It's redundant. Like I'm going to do it at this time. I have some alerts um, and then it'll be over with, right? Same thing with a doctor's appointment. I'm not going to uh, have a task say, go to the doctor, right? What I will do, however, is I will have tasks called schedule the laundry or schedule a doctor's appointment. And then after I've scheduled it, I put it on my calendar and I complete that task. So that is that is my workflow for uh, deciding whether something should be in the task manager or in the calendar. Just wanted to share that little, uh, little tip with you. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to hear your thoughts on this uh, calendar app and um, which one you're using. And also this is kind of a new video format for me, uh, just uh, sharing my thoughts on an app. So love to hear uh, what you think of me sharing my thoughts this way. Hey, again, don't forget to check out some of the free resources that I have in the description below the video. And as always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like. If you want more stuff, subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day.